Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 381 at scavengerlife.com. You know, sometimes uh, we get emails from people, and they say they just discovered the podcast. Ah, uh, yeah. And we've been doing this since 2013, 13, I believe. Pretty much every single week. Yeah. Only a couple weeks have we missed. Uh, because we like to be consistent like that. Yes, we try. Interesting thing is, you know, I, I find like these people, they'll say, like, I started from episode no one. You guys are in the 300s. And I always try and imagine what that must be like. So this podcast, we don't really, like, <laughs> you know, talk about anything monumental. It's more just, like, little diaries. Yeah, every week. Of our week. And... I think the reason why I like doing the podcast is it's kind of totally about the kind of business as we run. Right. It's not about us getting rich. It's just about us being consistent, you know? Right. It's just like every week we do a little bit more. Yep. Push things further. I don't know if we even push anything. We're just kind of... Well, I mean, I think that kind of goes along with the other, you know, eBay and the other businesses. It just has to be... Little steps all the time. Right. And I guess I'm trying to imagine what it must be like for someone to first find out about us. And then they start to uh, listen to a podcast and just they hear, you know, 300 podcasts all in a <laughs> row. And I think because, because, yeah. because I guess people are like doing eBay and right. it's just kind of like it's like in radio background. in the background. Yeah. And they just get to hear like a little story of people just doing it right you know yeah uh and i just think and i hope what's happening is like we're just showing like if you're not getting rich that's okay but if you're paying your bills and you're owning your time and you're enjoying it and you're finding things that you enjoy scavenging and it's a little bit of an adventure and especially if you have someone to share that with oh my god i feel like if you found paradise kind of like we have well, it's funny that you that you say this because it is kind of like people are listening to five years of our lives and our businesses in a very compact amount of time. Right. You know what I mean? That's sure. kind of crazy. Yeah, right. Like, because like, it's one hour chunks, right? So right. it's like you could listen to several weeks of podcasts, several months in like right. a short it, amount of time. Yeah, and you can, and just my God, in between those weeks are... So much stuff. There happened, are... Right? Sleepless nights, yeah. stress. Yeah. Also, lots of adventures and like, joy. Things that yeah. We've done. Uh, so we are starting our first fire for the winter time has in not, our wood stove. Has nothing to do with eBay, but everything about our lives and why we enjoy it. You know, you uh, might be able to hear it in the background. Yep. We heat our. Everyone knows who hears us. We heat our. Our house with uh, wood heat is we have a very small, compact house, kind of open loft plan. So it's actually perfect for a wood stove. So, you know, I keep the stove going for a couple hours and it just blows us out. Like, I'm walking around in my underwear because it's so hot. It's so know? funny because we try to, like, go as long as possible without burning. You know, like, it's kind of cold in the house, but it's not. But it got cold, like, overnight. It was yeah. like two days went by and we were like, uh... It's basically 60. And I think it's, it's also 60 in, because in we're house. just not uh, used to the cold. So it feels very cold. And uh, and, and it, it made me laugh this morning because, like, I, I literally slept in my sleeping bag last night. Because I was like, it's not that bad. Like, trust me, I was toasty in my sleeping bag. Uh, it was fine. You know, yeah. I was like, yeah, it's not that bad. It'll warm up again. And then this morning I was like... I really hope Jay starts the stove and you like got all this wood and stuff and you like didn't start the stove. I was like, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what he's waiting for. Well, it's freezing no. in this house. It's that thing about being, you know, scavengers, we scavenge for wood. You know, I pick it up. People cut down trees in their yard. They put it on Craigslist, like free wood. And yeah. all throughout the spring and summertime, anytime I'm out and about, I'll go and stop and pick up a all the load time. of wood. Like uh, this year, there was this old guy. He must have been in the 70s. Mm-hmm. He lived uh, in the town over, yeah. Yeah. And I always had a reason to kind of be in that part of the county. Um, 
he cut down like four trees in his backyard, like big oaks. Yeah. And uh, he just wanted the wood taken away. Yep. And it was great. It's like free wood. And just so anytime you were over there, you'd hop into his yard and grab. Yeah. Stuff. And so we actually like developed a, a relationship. And we yeah. cut another tree down. He says it's ready for you. Just come and I get could it. Go over any time into his backyard. He didn't need to be there. And I did a service for him. He did a service for me. And like. That Maybe. would I still need to split a, a more of it, so Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's one of those things where you're like you know, you wanna you wanna preserve what you have. If you don't have to burn, you're like, Okay, let's just hold out yeah. so that we can save it for as long as possible. But honestly today I was like I am cold in the house. Like, yeah. I am uncomfortable. Well, I mean, that's the thing about... I mean, so well, why are we talking about this? Well, it's all about scavenging, you know? Right. So I find, like, scavenging in the spring and summertime for wood is really easy because nobody uh, wants the wood. But now, by right. about right now, now, October, if I go on Craigslist uh, looking for free wood, uh, it's hard. Because You're competing with everyone else. Everyone's starting to already start thinking about wood. They haven't collected it or... The guys that sell wood, they're now making sure they have enough to sell, and so exactly. Uh, and I, we've seen that before in the fall when we've gone into you know the city and been like trying to get wood. We'll see dudes like you know competing for the exact same pile of wood, and you're like, hey, you know, you're like, yeah. oh, they got here before us, you know. I know. So it's like the it's ant. not fun. It's like the ant and the uh, grasshopper. We always try and be the ant. Exactly. Okay, eBay. Uh, we eBay. are all caught up with all of our inventory. Yeah. And and this has not been a problem. This was not a problem we had a couple of uh, years ago. You know, no. Up until a couple of uh, years ago, for all of our eBay life, yeah. we always had way too much stuff. Yeah. Piles, bins. Yep. Yeah. Stuff we hadn't touched in a year, you know, just, just there. There would be bins. We, we call them death piles. There would be bins in my office that I stopped looking at for six months to eight months at a time, and then I would be like, "What's in here? Why is this even? They what would is just, this?" These piles would just become like part of the background, where they would just become invisible, and we would just put more stuff on them. But uh, since we got, since we built a little warehouse. For yeah. ourselves, a big storage building, and since we started hiring someone to help us, right, uh, we're just getting through it. And now our problem is more of more about we can't. Well, we can't, we could, but like currently with our state of life, we're not scavenging enough to keep up with yeah. our helper who wants to work twelve hours, twelve hours a week, plus another helper who works four hours. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that's sixteen hours. And you're like, you know, this week we were stretched pretty thin. I did actually have enough for her because I had, like, a cache of, like, posters and artwork that we actually had quite a bit of. So that was good. But it 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 did get to a point where I was like, I might have to tell her I don't have anything for yeah. her, you know? Well, the good news is both of them are just, I mean, they understand that. They're kind of They're doing this. They're flexible workers. They're either in school or they just kind yeah. of have other jobs so it's fine but yeah. uh, it's an interesting you know if you've been hearing it for a while this is kind of a really new thing for us like kind of being on top of uh, our inventory yeah you're it, like, it was a dream i had and you uh, used to laugh at me i was like maybe <laughs> we can catch up and you're like, i Never. i would laugh i would laugh now i will say this i do have you know it's like 170 listings that need to be listed but when we when we sit down and do it, I get through it. You yeah. know, I do get caught up, so that's fine. And that's basically just having to go through the a listing to to make sure the uh, work that they did is you know the titles are good, right? Price it exactly. And make sure the uh, make sure it's in, in the order. right category. So it's it's more just kind of a looking over things and a researching than it is having to especially it's it mostly out. researching prices. I mean. Yeah. If I'm doing, like, T-shirts or clothes or whatever, I just do pricing off the top of my head. Like, that's not a problem. But if it's weird artwork or, you know, <laughs> goo gaws, yeah. I'm like, what? goo gaws. Yeah. Uh, people on the forum, specifically My Cottage, was announced or told us all that the, the um, eBay changed, rechanged their decision to not allow people to put items on sale. 
all the time. Yeah, if you had to wait 14 days, then if you could put it on sale. Now, it, now it was a weird rule. It was 14 days from when you first listed it, so it had to have your original price, 14 days. Or if you had already had it on sale... You'd have to wait 14 days between those sales. Right. Like, it was a weird... It was a weird... Yeah, thing. I mean, for us, it, it hadn't been a big deal because we're just a list it and forget it, so we never changed anything, so we could just put things on sale if we wanted right, to. Right, exactly. But basically, perma-sales are back. You know, the people yeah. who... You know, it's a strategy people have where they... They up their price by 15% and, and then, then they put their store on sale for 15%. Right, like immediately put their store on sale. So it looks like people are getting a deal, but it's yeah. really just kind of a... And I don't know, somebody said that Griff... Griff. He Griff? said that eBay actually did it because of some kind of a legal government... A rule where that's kind of like uh, truth in advertising or something like yeah. this, but then eBay decided it wasn't a big deal. So I guess whatever. not. Um, yeah, it's like when a store, I think there's some store, I think it's Kohl's, got in trouble for it where they would be like, everything's 30% off all the time. And it's right. like, well, <laughs> right. just put the real price on yeah, it. Yeah, just <laughs> like, like, why don't you just take 30% off and that's the price of whatever. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> whatever. People are smart to figure that out. So this isn't something we've experienced, but I guess eBay has updated their mobile app. Mm -hmm. And when you a list on the phone, mm -hmm. people are saying that there are now more steps you have to go through, and it's automatically mm -hmm. like putting make offer on everything, and mm. it has some thing now where if you check it, eBay will dynamically change your price over time. Oh, what? If it hasn't sold, it will mm. lower your price. And thing for us, though, we don't list on our phone. We take pictures through our phone. Right, so we make the listings. So I wonder if this will affect us because we make the listings on the computer, right. take the pictures with the phone, and then finish on the computer. Right. So so, I, so we haven't experienced any of that or seen it be. It, with the way that we have the eBay app, but uh, you know, if you have historically only taken pictures and listed through the phone, as you should probably keep an Just eye on that stuff. Just check those things. Yeah, they, yeah. It seems a little bit wonky. Now I remember when we went to it was like an eBay Open or some yeah. eBay big event. It was in Philly in 2011. Yeah. It was so long uh, ago. Yeah, uh, we actually met the people. Who built the eBay oh, mobile, the mobile app? app I don't know if it's the same team, but you know, this is I think pretty traditionally how it might work for some big corporations. eBay had hired a small app company, so that right. was up in like Seattle. So they weren't actually eBay employees, right? They it were was a contractor, like contractors, and they built the eBay app. Yeah, and so that's why you know people wonder why the app is sometimes different from the a website because I think it's probably built by a, a different team so they have different ideas about how the process should yeah, work. Yeah, it's weird though but it's just like, you know, if it's one company it should be integrated <laughs> together. Yeah. You know, just like we always say, you can't send invoices through the mobile app. Yeah. You know, it's and like, that was in 2000, I mean that was seven years yeah, ago so I don't know how it is now if they brought the app in, in house now. Uh you know, something people should know this probably in our community, uh, but I tested it to make clear. We bought some pans, some copper bottom pot pots. Yeah, root beer wear. And, you know, many of you probably see this where you, you go to a thrift store and they're all black. Yeah, they look horrible, ugly. right? So I did what people have talked about in the past where I just took a pan Put some salt in a vinegar. Like a larger pan. Right. A larger pan. Put it on the stovetop. Heated it up. Put the uh, dirty paint pot in it. And just kind of lightly scrubbed it every couple of, of uh, minutes. And it looks... It looked amazing. Almost brand new. So I've, I've sold Revere Wear copper clad since the beginning. Because we used to have it growing up. Since the beginning of time. The beginning of time. Since since we started scavenging, right? Just because I love it. It's great, you know. Uh, and I've never been able to clean the bottoms to the full extent of it being, like, totally beautiful and perfect. 
um, you know, you scrub it, you, like, use, like, you know, the scouring stuff, it never gets clean. And this method, we'd heard about it before, but I just hadn't tried it. It's incredible. I mean, it takes time, you know? It takes, you know, 15 minutes or so per pot. We just had one. It just, it looked incredible. It made me want to, like, go grab all our pots and redo them and, like, retake photos, which I'm not going to do, but... From now on, I feel like we well, would I do think that. that's one of those categories of items where when when we first started a decade yeah. ago, if you would find those pots and sell them, they would sell for like thirty and forty dollars each. each. Now we're so lucky to get like so fifteen dollars, fifteen for to a, twenty for for like a quart, you know, yeah, sauce like a pan. saucepan. Uh, just I because, just think they're everywhere. Well, because I think you know people, you know, other. Other people who sell, right? Like here, oh, bolo, yeah, and then bolo. they, you know, you, you find them. And the other thing too is people want them in like pristine vintage condition, and I never find like the bottoms of mine are warped. Like they are only good for a gas, you know, oven, a uh, gas stove, and you know, because like an electric stove, you shouldn't really use warped pans because they're not going to work as well. So you know, it's just like. Eh. Yeah, but you know what? If I find them and sell them for twenty bucks, and we can clean the bottom so that they look beautiful, that's cool. Yep, I'll do it. This week we talked about it before that we've been having issues with canceled sales. Oh man! And we, you know, look. If someone buys an item and uh, wants to cancel, it's all good. Like you know, it's all legal. Yeah, it's like it's everyone's I'll cancel right. It. We've done it before. They made I made a mistake, whatever. But not really on eBay. Uh, and so we had three cancel sales this week, and two of them were like really big, really sales. high dollar. You know, items. for us, you know, like a three hundred dollars sale and then like a hundred and fifty dollars sale. And it's just, and actually, after one of the big sales, I called it. I was like. They're gonna this cancel. person's going to cancel within five uh, minutes. We get a message cancellation, cancellation, and we and and we on um, one of them. I was like, I just have to write to this person and be like, what? Why are you canceling? Right. I mean, we were going to allow. Yeah, the I said cancellation I'll, I'll object, cancel. I'm just curious just if this is a mistake to or know. whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and she just said, I bought it by mistake. And and I know we've talked about it. It's before oh on the uh, forums where people say they've but bought you know but, an item but. like on their phone but i still don't because when, when you purchase things it you have to do multiple steps i don't know so look i have not i don't purchase things through my phone like i only because usually i'm like trying to do research and compare prices and whatever so i only buy stuff on my computer right. so i have no idea is it really that easy right it must be well, it must be well some people say and i I don't know if it's true where, or the reason why, you know, it's when you buy an item, eBay advertises other people's items on on uh, your item, and, and they're saying that when someone buys an item, they'll then see, oh, I could have bought this one cheaper. Just cancel this cancel, other one. Let me buy this one. I don't know. You know, it's... it's just- Stinks as a seller. It stinks because when you're having a week where maybe it's a little slow, and especially if you get like a big sale, three hundred dollar sale, you're like, wow, that's so great. Oh, they're canceling right. like immediately. This, this made my day. That's you know, it's like, happened a lot lately. Yeah, it's really and and actually, <laughs> look, it actually was more than three because there were several. Maybe I'm thinking of last week. There were several just smaller. You know, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollar items. Even, even it would be overnight. It was like they paid for it. I'm about to ship it. Oh, I just, I need you to cancel yeah. this. I'm like, oh. Well, oh. I do want to be clear. It's with the scale we're talking about. So we sold like sixty things uh, over yeah, the week. Kind of crazy. We had uh, three people cancel. I yeah. think a week ago it was like two. But yeah. normally we have like no None. cancellations. So I so, just so I so my theory is. And we should just check. I should just sign in and buy something on eBay, something cheap and small on my phone. It must be so easy to buy something that someone must just not be paying attention. And they're like, oh, I was just seeing what the measurements were on this and I accidentally bought it. Like, hmm. they must have changed something on the mobile app. Yeah. Like, the mobile app is new. People are complaining. There's got to be something. Maybe. Because it's just too many. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, I don't know. It's annoying, but... 
Look, I cancel it. If I haven't shipped it, if it hasn't like gone away. Yeah, they have every right to. I'm like, okay. Okay, this week, even though it might not have felt like it, we doubled our sales from a week ago. <laughs> so crazy. And, you know, and this is just a good example of like we didn't do anything differently. Same store, same everything, same, same prices, listings. just different group of people are looking at our stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, the thing is, I feel like we still haven't gotten really into the holiday season where sales are consistent. Like, I, I'm just so excited by that. We've, you know, been through this enough where there's that time of the year yep. where holiday season starts and it's like every single day, it's just, just sales. lots of sales. And it's so exciting. All, it's like every hour. It's what we it's live like, for, right? Yeah, it's like. So, our sales still have not gotten that cons- uh, assistant yet where we'll have days where we only get. Four or five sales, and then we'll have days where we get twelve. You know? Right. Um, it's just it's up and down. But this money we're making in eBay, like this is what motivates us. Like it, I find like when people come on the a forum, they're like, "I just heard to sell, or I've been selling for three months, and you know I'm making X amount of dollars." My question is always like, "What are you uh, using that uh, money for?" Because I feel like that's right. a, a motivation. Pay your health insurance, your vacation. Pay your mortgage. Pay off your house. For us right yeah. now, it's helping us to pay for plumbing and brickwork on this building we bought. Yes. That's so, that's the project that we're working on now. Super motivated. We, walk, we walked into the building yesterday and the day before. We kind of just go over there, even if we're like, we don't have something exactly to do, but let's just go over there. We did have something to do yesterday, but we had like a window, this weird window you had a theory on one part of the building that you thought it was a stairwell at one point because there's these windows in the weirdest places. Like one was at the bottom of the floor of the bathroom. And it was still there right behind the drywall. Like we open the drywall and there's a window that's like open to the elements basically. So um, you had that bricked up. It looks beautiful. Yep. Totally professional. Yep. Blends in. Not you know. cheap. But. Not cheap <laughs> at all. Like, so we have like three or four of those like little things that have to okay. happen in the building, and Old we're like, buildings. we're like, how, how much is that going to cost? Yeah. But he did a great job. Yep. So two thousand bucks. Two thousand yep. dollars. <laughs> That's how much it's going to cost. But it's for quite a bit of brick work and some and of the bricks. Work. You know, it's a solid brick building, and some of the bricks are on the outside. Just you know, over the past almost eighty yeah. hundred years have just kind of like kind of exploded a little bit on the outside. So yeah. they just need to get cut it's out and fix some of those. Uh, okay, so how good was our week? So we sold 61 items for almost $2,500. It's one of those weeks where you said last week we sold like 32 and this week we sold 64 and it doubled. I'm like, did it feel like we doubled? I think it's just when stuff is easy to ship, like some clothes or some shoes. Like that stuff's so easy that I'm not like... Yeah. You know, feeling overwhelmed, but when it's lots of delicate things, I'm like, oh my god, it felt good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Uh, some of the things we sold, we'll just—I mean, it's really super hodgepodge. Like, yeah, it's the kind of week where I'm just like, I love it because our store is so yeah crazy, a uh, varied, <laughs> yeah. and it uh, reflects that. You know, shoes, pants, clothes, broken pipes. Uh, broken. You know, just <laughs> you have to preface that it, it's a smoking pipe right. it's like the bowl of fancy bowl right. of a smoking pipe that didn't have a stem right. you just put a stem on there so I guess yeah. when you say broken pipes it sounds like broken pipe broken pipes we found well underneath a building let's talk about something broken yes yes this is my favorite story so of the week so we're big advocates of Dyson vacuums Look, uh, you know, we believe the hype because they really are nice. They're rechargeable. They have good. These suction. are the handheld ones, yeah. not like the uprights. These, These are, are... This, a suction, and you can buy them on eBay. You don't have to buy them brand new. We buy them either a refurbished or used. They're great. Love them. One of the ones we had had a broken part. Ryan fixed it, and she sold the part for twenty two dollars. That was broken. Okay, listen. It was. I think someone dropped it. I think someone who was staying at our house was being nice and vacuuming and they dropped it so the inside like handle it's like the the trigger to turn the vacuum on that holds the battery was not recharging the battery it was not recharging the battery and i (laughs) i opened up like the battery case and this piece fell out i'm like okay it's obviously broken so i bought that piece it's like the handle plus the battery i bought it for like 45 dollars 
which is expensive. You're like, that's how much a vacuum costs at Walmart is 40 bucks for a whole vacuum, right? But I was like, clearly I'm buying particular parts. Someone else is going to buy my part that's broken for a part on it that's not broken, like the trigger or the spring or the whatever. So I'm going to sell my part for half the money I paid for... So they sold. Can you explain? So someone that might be a new, like, what? You can sell broken things on eBay? So how do you let the person know who buys it that it's broken? Okay. I was super clear. In the title, in all caps, even before the word Dyson, I think, I was like, or it was like Dyson, broken, four parts, you know, handle for a, a, a V6 vacuum, you know, so that's in the title, broken, four parts. In the item condition? For, as in F-O-R. F-O-R. Four parts, yep. four parts yep. only. Broken. Right. Broken. And in item condition, I say exact same thing. And then if they say used or four parts as like, you know, new, used, four parts, obviously four right. parts. And then in the description, like everywhere you possibly can, you right. say it's broken. Because if they if they get it and they're like, this is right. broken. But but, like, yeah. but the most important part we've been told by eBay is putting it in the title and in the item, item descriptions. Con- where, yeah, it's the like condition new, description. Yeah, like new, used, or four parts. Or, right. You know, and so that's, and so if they say, hey, I thought this was going to work, they can return it. For their uh, money, but right. they don't, it's right. as described. Right. It's clearly as. described. And there's actually a market for that. Like if you ever yep. find a broken uh, Roomba, oh, those, I've those, sold like, a broken Roomba. It's robotic uh, vacuum yeah. cleaners. People will buy those for parts. Yeah, because, because they, they they'll have a. So the thing is, you're like, I have a working X model of whatever, but the trigger spring broke. Dyson's not going to sell you a trigger spring, so buy it off me. Because my battery won't charge, but this yeah. trigger spring's there. You know, that's that's a market. It's yeah. a real market. I love yeah. it. Yep. I would never like if I was if I had a store on on my own, I would not be selling those things. So I am like you. scavenger of scavengers. Our highest sale this week was a Kemper, Quimper, Kemper, uh, uh, like a bowl. It, it's. I will say this, it's Kimper style, so oh, it it, it's not actually a Kimper. Oh. It's like a different French brand, but it doesn't matter because it's this little like flower potter thing that sold right. for two hundred and forty dollars yep. and but it's a piece of pottery, and we've been talking about that uh, lately uh, where we've been getting into the market Psh, pottery. pottery man. it's so crazy because it's plentiful at auctions, it's plentiful at estate sales. It does sell, and it can sell for high prices, but it sucks to store, and it sucks to pack, <laughs> because it's so delicate. Right. And see, and it's for us, like, the pottery and, like... Ceramics. Yeah, that a market isn't interesting if it's only going to be $20. Oh, no, like, I want to... Although I do sell stuff for low, if I get it, I'm like, eh, it's not worth it. It's much. for us, we're trying to learn the pieces that will sell for, right. you know, yeah. Like Kimper. $50. Kimper was the first... I mean, we bought some other stuff before, other ceramics, but that was the first, like, cash that we got, and we were like, whoa, yeah. this stuff is worth a lot of money to some people, you know? Yeah. $240 for this little piece. And actually, we were watching a movie yesterday uh, when that sold, and you said, give it 15 minutes, and this guy's going to cancel. I yeah. know it, because that's the I week know, we've been having. Yeah. You know, So I even set a timer on my phone. Okay, let's see. within 15- He didn't cancel, he didn't so cancel. thank God. Yep. Uh, and then the final thing I'll just talk about, I sold two more D&D books. Uh, they aren't yep. actually D&D. It was Tunnel and Trolls, anyone in the gaming. Role-playing. Role-playing games. But this came from that big box lot that I had bought. You bought for like ninety bucks. I think I bought paid more. I think it was a hundred and ninety dollars. Oh what? I think you're right. Because you and this guy were going at it. I was you going like, head to head with this old guy that I didn't like, and I just wanted to. It was a win. pretty big. It was yeah. two boxes. Yeah. It was a lot of books. Right, but uh, we made our money back. Yeah, yeah, but, but uh, that was a high yeah, price. That's good. To pay. A role playing game. So one of them. So let's say how much they sold for. One of them sold for eighty. So it was one twenty five total. Yeah. For two so of them. that's not bad. awesome. Not bad. Although I get messages, so I put these up really high because I want to make our money back on yeah. those boxes. 
and I'll get messages from this isn't worth that much. I'm like, fine. And then like, you know, two yeah. months later it sells for $120. Right. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> maybe that's it is thing. worth that much. I mean, that's the thing about having a big inventory is you can, you can wait, you can wait. You know. Well, and also what you're waiting out partly is the other people that have it listed for cheaper. So if someone else sells their book for 20 and then mine's the only one. And then you sell it for 80. Yeah. Hopefully. I mean, it, it, you know, I think that's what uh, we've learned a long time ago. If we feel like we're in a category that is uncommon, mm-hmm. even if there's 20 others, yeah. we're willing to be the highest because eventually the cheaper ones sell off. And the yeah. other thing, too, is, yeah, the cheaper ones sell off. But also, a lot of times, you're willing to ship internationally, and a lot of people mm-hmm. aren't. So I'm also hoping to get the market in other places, like... Somewhere in the UK is like, no one else will ship here, but right. this is the highest priced one. And like we've always talked about, we always try and take good pictures and good titles and description. And I think that there are collectors out there. I mean, I'm like that too. I'm willing to pay more for something yeah. if it looks like exactly it's what I want versus, you know, you have a lot of people that are just kind of junkers and they just kind of take really bad pictures. And I'm like... It looks I want to like buy from the professional person. Yeah, it looks yeah. like it's what I want, but am I going to be wasting two weeks of my life getting this thing and it's not what I want? Because I've done that before where if I'm buying stuff yeah. um, and then I get it from a seller who clearly is an amateur yeah. or a lazy seller, you're like, oh, this is not what they said it was and it's right. broken. <laughs> you know, I mean, whatever. I mean, so the, that's been a good thing for us. you know. So we buy these old houses and buildings and we're really into like buying cool things to put in the house right and so i'll look for like an old doorknob or something. right right and you know this is the way collectors or people right d- designers shop on ebay because i know it's how i do it i will uh, look at every, every single, single one. one you know there might be <laughs> yeah. 400 of them and i will go through page by page and yep. i will scan the photos i'll click on the ones that look good i'm not i mean price is important but price, I'm not looking not just always for price. the yeah. a lowest price. Right. So I'm looking for like someone that has a good eye and is showing me something that's really kind of special. Right. And that's the thing about this kind of like weird old stuff is like it's not like everything's identical that's come from the same factory. Right. They're all just kind of like old doorknobs. Right. And so that's who you're competing against. And right. I will often pay more because it's the thing I want. Right, you know? right. So that's why... That's why we know the market because we often are the market. I mean, not always. You know, we always have that saying with a lot of scavengers, I'm not my target market. Um, You know, I'm not my target audience. But sometimes you are, actually. So that does help. It's just a different way of selling than its mentality than kind of the Amazon mentality where it's just like we're all selling the exact same item that's come out of the exact same factory. We're competing on price. I think know? that's why when we first started on Amazon, or or we had bought some military surplus clothing, and I was like, oh, maybe I should try to sell this on Amazon, because I have 800 pairs of <laughs> pants, you know, yeah. literally had that many. And I, I could not understand why I couldn't make my own page. I remember being like, this is years ago, I remember being like, I don't understand how to sell on Amazon, like... There's no page for this, but there's one that's similar, so I have to have the same listing. Yeah. That's how different it is, yep. right? You're like catalog pages. What? Yeah. Yep. Okay, scavenge of the week. We like We did said, scavenge a little bit. We scavenge some. We even went to a goodwill. Did we get which, anything? Oh, we got two pairs of shoes. <laughs> which we don't do very often these it days. Like uh, so sad. We'll, we'll go in there sometimes. I, just You even picked something out for me to buy, and I was like, no, I don't want it yeah. <laughs> for myself. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's just it's one of those days. S- some weeks we don't scavenge a lot. Here, this is like so minor, but it was kind of cute. These little, um, it's porcelain. It's ceramics. This is what I found. My mom, uh, years and years ago when she was selling on eBay, like back in the early 2000s, I remember she had this set of like orange juice. It was like when orange juice was only made like by hand like back in the 30s when you would like hand squeeze orange juice and you had these fancy little cups that looked like oranges and you would have a pitcher that looked like a big orange and it was made out of porcelain it's made in japan and i found the cups like i remember that in my mind like it was either 
lemons for lemonade or orange for orange juice, like when that was a big deal. Like now you just buy orange juice at the store, like whatever, it's just orange juice. Uh, but so there are these little made in Japan. They are porcelain. They're hand painted. They look a little kitschy, but they're cute. So I got the cups at a thrift store. I had seen them there a couple times before and never got them because I was like, eh. I thought they were like the cheap. Who's going to buy them, you think? I think someone who <laughs> who's going to buy them. I think someone who's really into like mid-century kind of kitschy stuff where they want like the little like, oh, we're all going to have brunch and I'll just do like orange juice in the orange cup. Or someone you know? they're really colorful. And they're really I colorful. Could just see them on a shelf. Yeah. Only. I should I should send a picture to my mom because I think there's a um, there might be a word for the set, but they're they're cute. Yeah. The the reason I didn't get them is you know those like kind of cheap. It's if you didn't buy them. It's before the first time. Yeah. yeah, you know when you get cheap ceramics, it's not porcelain, but it's a white ceramic. But you can tell it's cheap. When I first saw those, I thought that's what they were, and I was like, eh, they're just like the you know whatever. It's like best, but it's like not good. Um, but these are actually like Japanese porcelain, so mm-hmm. that changed my mind because I picked one up this time. Anyway, that's my scavenger of the week. I thought they were cute at first. I thought they were ugly, <laughs> and I was like, oh. You know, on the a, f- a forum, I don't know if you're keeping up with that, but we were talking a lot about online auctions, scavenging online auctions, uh... like online auctions, like auction houses that are just. I mean, on the internet, right? You know, I've noticed that it's been in the past two or three uh, years where now more and more auction houses, some of them even in our area have just gone purely online. Like, they don't yeah. even do... In person. In person auctions. Like, you can't attend it. They just, like, this one that I know of, you know, they have a huge uh, warehouse and we'd go there. We and, used to know. go there and buy And stuff. now they only do online auctions. Yeah. And I guess that they make more... A money that way? I don't know. But anyway, people were talking about their different online auctions, and I really think it depends on where you are. In rural areas like where we are, when we bid on something online, we often have to drive 45 minutes to the auction to, to pick it up and then 45 minutes back. So if I only win one thing... That's the thing. Yeah. And, and right. I also find a lot of online auctions, things sell for, for crazy high. Like I feel like it's some... It's become a hobby for like yeah. It's like home shopping a network or something because things will sell for. I'm like I can't believe this sold for seventy five dollars. Right, like, this way. Well, that's the hard thing too. Like you said, this one. I think it's the one that you're thinking of. It's over an hour. That's actually over an hour away from us. You know, there's the convenience of shopping at home. You don't have to attend an auction. You don't have to be there for hours and hours, and that's cool. But if you're like, I'm gonna bid on twenty things. I won one of them. For ten dollars, and now I have to drive there and get it. Right. You're like, oh no! And also, it's too far away for us to go and see in person, and that's the other problem. Because I feel like with auctions, for us at least, it's really nice to be able to see things in person before we bid. Because you know, you see the quality and yeah, you pick it um, up. Yeah, you know, and because it's online, I think it's open to a bigger audience right. and. Because it's online, people can uh, research the stuff that they see. So that's why prices are going higher. I mean, the fact of going in person, like during the day, is like a barrier to entry. And that's why it, you can get things for cheaper because right. not as many have people to, have, have. What you're time saying to do is that. like an in person auction yeah. that you have to be. Like one of my friends actually won, uh, it was like a table and chairs at that auction the other day. And she texted me and she's like, Can you go pick this up? Because I have to be at work all day, and they you have to pick up in this certain window. And I was like, it's like an hour and a half away. I'm yeah. like, no, I can't. Right. But it's just, you know, she was having that same issue where she's like, oh, no, I won this thing. How will I get it? This is where I think being in an urban area is a real benefit. People mm. will, are saying that they do online auctions because the online auction houses are just like right down the street. By. So they oh, can totally. actually go there. They can check everything out. Right. They can bid online and then they can pick up, you know, very easily. Um, yeah. There's Max, Maxi Bid. Oh, what was it called? A MaxSold.com is one that people were talking about. Max Sold. Yep. There's a Proxy Bid. So those Max Sold ones, are those different auctions all over the country? Yep. Okay. So, you know, a lot of these sites, Interesting. You, you just put in your a, a zip code and it tells you the ones that are closest to you. That's you know, smart. and some of them are like 
more estate sales. Some of them are actually auction houses, but it's all auction format. And uh, so that's a website for auction houses to plug their stuff into. I don't really oh, okay. know. I just know yeah. you can go there and just bid on stuff, and you know, yeah. And so I think it's cool if people are doing that. You know, I'm. It's, I think it's, it's cool fun. too. Now there was there was the that auction site everything but the house ebth ebth. Com. Now they would ship to you, and something that the <laughs> part of the conversation we had, we we did buy a bunch of stuff from ebth, One but time. the shipping was so you're yeah. like, uh, I'm how am I going to make if you were buying for yourself maybe like some high end you know designer clothes yeah. or whatever you're like okay I'll pay the shipping but. You have to be able to actually uh, yeah. pick it up in person because the, the uh, shipping, shipping and will EB, kill you. the EBTH like place that was closest to us that we were buying from was over two hours away. So yeah. it was like, Ey. yeah, I yeah, mean, you know. So it, it just it it just t- to me, there's just so many ways to scavenge. Yeah, and you know, some people just uh, want to be at home and do it online. Some people, yeah, and that will work for They want to go out into the world and do it. I mean, I that's why I kind of enjoy going to online auctions because, you know, it, like it is a whole scene. There it's are... the... Yes. It's the auction scene. Yeah. I like. Yeah. Oh, God. And I find, like, buying online because, you know, I've gone into different phases where I, like, get into it, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, I find like it takes it takes a lot it of time. It takes a lot of time. I mean, no, you know, it, like, it does. Like, you're like there, can't you keep up with it. And, there are some <laughs> things that I consistently try to buy from other eBay sellers if they're be- selling like a huge lot of X item that I'm willing to break up and sell for more. Um, but yeah, it takes a lot of time. Like, you really have to be on top of it and like have a snipe program and like make sure you're. Not overpaying and, you know, all those things. It's very convenient. It's, like, super convenient. But sometimes you're paying more than if you found yeah. it in the wild. I know? guess just as my point is online auctions, I just don't think it's – I think it's, you're still spending time. Like, it's not like yeah, yeah, yeah. There's if, no if you buy online, there. it takes no time at all. It's just it, – it's just it's it's all time, you know? Yeah. You're going to Goodwill. You're going to auctions. You're going to flea markets. You're online. You're, you're online. It's all time, and it's just wherever yeah. you want to spend that time. Right. That's all. Right. Well, I think that's the whole, the whole philosophy we have with eBay, where and we've had several people ask us this too, and I've had people even in my family ask me this, where they're like, you know, how much time should I be spending trying to make a living? And you're like. Okay, the time you would work at an office, that much time. Right. Like, yeah. it's not a time saver. I yeah. mean, like, we talk about owning our time and, like, but, you know, it's time versus money where either I'm paying someone to take photos and I'm using the money I make or I'm spending my own time to do that. You know, right. like, there's no right. there's no magic. <laughs> right. I mean, there was someone on the forum... And this happens from time to time. You know, a newish to selling online, and he was asking about. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. He sounded like he wanted to. He wanted to sell more like Amazon's people, mm-hmm. where he wanted to like find categories where he could basically buy wholesale and you know just buy a bunch of it and list right. one thing right. and just sell a lot of it. You know, I'm just like, it, it's that. I feel like that's all still time because you're having to find these products from factories and wholesalers and they don't work out and you got to find something else and you have to ship it to amazon and you know right so you're like you're talking about what everybody's doing like you just described retail (laughs) like that's what it is you know um well it's like so look another conversation we're having i don't know if you're going to get into this but it's it was a kind of a side conversation about let's get into it trying to sell higher dollar items yes. spending more money now it's the same conversation with auctions where we're like we usually find if we go to certain auctions we find higher dollar items well, look, we spend more on them well look here's my but, fantasy so right, sure. i'd sketch out this fantasy a while ago and this fantasy i've not pursued it fully mm-hmm. so you know our our bread and butter is like every, you know, we sell like average thirty dollar items. You know, we, we buy for like a dollar, sell for thirty dollars. You know, and more hopefully, but and yeah, it, with all the costs, but about thirty dollars. So you know, this fantasy I have is like, can we like sell things on average for a hundred dollars? Right. You know, go and uh, the problem is, is that. 
to find items that sell for over a hundred or over three hundred dollars. It just takes a lot more time to find those items. So, like when we go to auctions, we go there's almost all the auctions that we go to are two parts. There's a beginning part that's about two hours where they're just selling off like boxes and tables of stuff, and that's mainly what we do. Mm-hmm. That's and, what we buy. And you know, when we go and buy a truckload of stuff, it's just a bunch of boxes. There will be little hidden things. We'll maybe have five or six things that sell for over a hundred or two hundred dollars. Just because it's just a, a lucky thing. Yeah, right. There's a second part of the auction that we often don't stay for. Right. And there will be guys that just kind of are hanging out waiting for yeah. that part of the auction. It's all the artwork, antiques, collectibles. The high end. Like you look at it and you're like, that's going to go for a lot of And money. so it's my thing is there must be a market that we just are ignorant about and these guys have tapped in I mean that. these are the you and know they have knowledge yeah. about it, you know and so they're willing to buy a painting for three hundred dollars and maybe I'm assuming then they sell it for maybe over several thousand. thousand yeah I don't know. Right. That's my fantasy is like could I could we get into that right. market? Is that interesting? And it is interesting because again it's like another challenge. And so right. that's my fantasy. Um, so so the issue with that that we're having right now is you know, we're renovating another building, right? So uh, we don't have time to do that. And we also don't have the money, or we do, but we need to spend it on the building. You know, like, they are higher costs to buy those things. And then, you know, there's the risk of holding it for a really long time, you know? And long tail works great when you have almost no right. cost of merchandise. I mean... You know, we spend money on merchandise, but it's really minimal. It's like, so minimal. On a normal month, we might spend three hundred dollars. I mean, be a lot of money. For yeah, that'd inventory. be you'd be like. But what? if we're spending three hundred dollars on a single item, you know, right? So a lot. So, so for me, I didn't chime into that conversation because I didn't have time. But like, you know, it's the same. It's that argument of like. You have to have more money that you're willing to hold, yeah. like your holding costs, and the time to look for right. it. And those are two things that we don't have. I think when the we're time is the biggest thing. In my fantasy, it yeah. would mean me or us would have to be going to two to three to four auctions a week. You just are, and you're and going to auctions, and you're buying only five things. You're you're cherry picking right. the higher end things. Like it reminds me of like yeah, other people like. Like our friend James, who would buy art. You know, he would go to an auction and he would buy one thing. Right. Like, he's not like, oh, I'll take that cool lamp and then whatever. You know, he's like, I want that one piece. Right. You know, and... But then, but then he's selling things for tens of thousands of Right. Dollars. So yeah. it's just like... Right. It's like... So, you know, and level up. The, the time is like also going, previewing the day or week it's before, right, right. doing a lot of a research, right. you know, you have to right. know it, and then you hope that, you know, there isn't someone else that's done all that <laughs> research too. Yeah. And and also I think, it's like you said, I don't know if in that model we would be willing to sit on things as long as we do now. It would be where we would have to kind of know the uh, market and, uh, right. you know, I'm, I, you know, I don't know, do, are those the kind of guys where they actually have buyers already, like they know some Chinese art and they already know people that would buy it from them. And And it's hard too, because you're like, you really have to put a cap on what you're willing to pay. Like I've seen some, like at that auction, I've seen some pieces of Tiffany go and I'm like, they just paid what it's worth. Like, I'm pretty sure I know how much that would go for, you know, in a retail used retail setting. And that's how much it's worth, you know, that it's worth 2000 and they just paid 2000. So you're like, what if I, you yeah. know, like bid them up and I was like, right. can I sell it for four? I no, guess I to know. me, you know, at the end of the day, what's interesting about that conversation is there's just, yeah. it, those are things that I enjoy because it means there are different challenges that we can take on if we ever got bored of this, right. you know, like that could be exciting. It's a whole right. new a level to learn about, right. to a research, to try, to experiment, you know. Yeah, I think uh, it's... Where things don't have to just be a grind. So. Right. And, you know, I think how we've built our businesses are low risk. Like, these are low risk, I think. Right. Even in real estate, you're like, 
I'm pretty sure if I needed to sell this piece of real estate, I would make all my yeah, money Yeah, I mean, back, we you know? buy property like we buy our eBay stuff. It's We buy it cheap enough where if, you know, God it forbid something happen, we could sell the house and make our yeah. money back, you know. Um, okay, and one other thing, we had co- talked a couple of the things in the uh, forum that had been interesting. Winchester 38 yes. says he's going full-time. He's a Canadian uh, yes. guy who sells. And uh, it's always, you know, exciting to hear someone we've kind of known a while online who's like, I'm, we're going to do it. And it's cool. Him and his wife have actually talked about it. They're going to move to a rural area. It's so cool. Cut down expenses. I mean, it's, great. it's kind of amazing hearing about that because, you know, someone's very casually kind of talking about a huge... I mean, they've, they're they changing their life. Change, yeah. Their lifestyle right. is completely changing. But it's so great because it's like, you know, it's inspiring to hear people do that and continue to... It's great to hear people think about it and yeah. then have them be like, okay, we, we're doing it. Yeah. We're actually going to do it. Um, and, you know, it is an interesting time, at least in America. I mean, employees have more power now than they have in a while because unemployment is so uh, low right now. Mm, I know a a, good way I to put know it. that wages haven't really come up as much as any of us have alike, but uh, I, I bet they will. And... You know, so if you have a good job, like now's the time to, I guess, really try and get a raise and save its money. So you don't think? No, I guess that's true because they, you would think you would have more power because you're like, there's not as many people desperate for jobs. So if mm-hmm. I'm in my position, I, I mean, can ask because for... we haven't worked for a company for <laughs> like, a what, long time. What happens? I yeah. feel like. This would be the good time to go into your boss's office and say, I want to raise right. because the unemployment is so low right. and it's harder for companies to, to find a workers. To I think you. it's many people that work are still kind of shell-shocked from the 2008 yep. thing and they're just like, yep. I'm just happy I have a job. A job. Yeah. I mean, now's the time. Like, you know, employers aren't going to pay at you if you don't ask for it so very often. Yeah. Um, but, you know... I always say, you know, anyone that wants to go full time, it's like I always get afraid of the next crash. You know, uh, I am a bit shell shocked. You know, I'm like, still shell, totally shell like, shocked. Um, Are you kidding me? Shell shocked. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, I think because there was a lot of us too that were kind of living as if we were in an economic crisis, just in case, and then it happened, and we were like, "Yep." I'm yeah. super glad we saved so much money because yeah. now I need it all. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I feel good just trying to keep our debt down and yeah. you know, no consumer debt and Right. Anyway, I don't know what all that means. Just be safe out there everybody. Yeah. Uh okay, our coming week. So we have a week before we travel. We're, we're going to a video job in San Francisco. Yep, we're going to San Francisco to do some of our career jobs. We we still do it from time to time. Yeah, you know. So talking, I enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, talking about people who go full time, it doesn't have to be all or a nothing. It you can still do contract work, and you know, and often you'll get paid a more than it you ever did as an employee. So it's a good thing. Yeah, and actually, during this job that we're we're going to go talk to someone else about another potential job. Uh, they just happen to be in San Francisco. So that's kind of funny. We're like, well, <laughs> I mean, I, I think that I think people might, you know, if you have like a professional kind of job, if you're good at something, yeah. word gets around. I mean, we don't we look don't for advertise any work. ourselves. We just yeah. get word of mouth jobs. And, uh, you know, we pick and choose what we want to do. And it's really kind of a good life, you know. Yeah, it's really nice to be able to say yes to jobs that you think are interesting. Obviously, we get paid, so that helps, but... Well, right. I mean, it's all about getting paid. It's all about getting paid, but, (laughs) you know, like, there are jobs... Well, it depends on how much they would pay me, obviously, but there are some jobs where I'm just like, eh, good take it or leave it, you know? Well, I think for us, like, right now, it's we're like, okay, we need to put in a new HVAC a system in this building. What's gonna pay for that? Can we get this job to pay for exactly. that? You know, so that's exactly. that's our goal right now. Yep. You know, exactly. <laughs> like. Okay, let's answer questions that people sent in. Okay, you can always call our voicemail line. The phone number is five four zero four zero seven eight four eight six, or you can email us a question 
from your phone, the email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. Hey, this is Will from North Carolina. I just was listening to the podcast and heard Mark the Shark's uh, comment about eBay automatically turning, uh, taking its prices and lowering them. Um, but he had mentioned specifically about listing on the app. So if you updated your app to the newest version of the app, there's now a feature on the app that allows you to turn it on and off. It's just a checkbox, and it is defaultly checked to make offer is on by default. But also there's a thing called allow eBay to dynamically price your item, which allows them to lower it by a percentage every time it relists up to the eight times or, or all the way good, they'll cancel. They'll set a, a bottom to it. But you have to go in and turn that off. And when you're listing in the app, you have to go through and pull open every expansion thing now when you're actually going to list it from the app. Because if you don't, they will not use your default shipping policies. They will not use your default payment policies. You have to go in and tell it to do all that on every listing. And I've, you know, now if you create drafts on the computer, that still works fine. But if you create them on the app and list them from the computer, obviously, it still works fine. But if you do it solely from the app, you have to go through and manually turn those options off and, and set your shipping policies and all that. Um, just thought that might help him and some other people out. Have a great day. Thanks for the podcast. Love the show. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. So if you're just purely listing on the app you don't even have a laptop computer you don't even have you're just using the phone you got to go in and look and change those options yeah i mean we didn't know that i don't know i feel like we keep our ebay app updated so i don't know if we're at the newest one or not but we have not noticed that or right because we don't purely just list on the app we're going on the computer starting our drafts going through it's like it strips it out as you're interesting going back on the computer but this goes back to what we said about i my my theory is my hypothesis is that the app is made by a different team than the people that make the uh, website. Yeah. So that's why. And we, we've talked about this too, where I think eBay struggles with you're making the app. Do, do you make it for brand new people? Do, do you make it for people that have sold on eBay for a long time? There's, you know, there's also been a uh, talk of <laughs> having a separate app for sellers where you're like, you know, allow me to do, you know, like, don't yeah. put it in the app that normal people who just buy stuff. Like, buy you know, I think stuff. Amazon has made the choice, like, people who sell on Amazon have to be basically, like, a business. You know, we want right. it receipts, we want to see, yeah, exactly. like, you know, LLCs, and we want to <laughs> see, you know, like, they're not, I think that they're turning away from people just... A selling and eBay casually. Wants people to eBay's sell still casually. struggling with. I think they still have this thing like just sell stuff in your uh, a closet, right. like a yard sale, right. and then so they're uh, making tools specifically for them. So like this thing about like changing your price dynamically over time to sell it, right? It's quickly. That's for people who are just trying to dump their stuff, you know. Right. And also, like to me, it sounds like a bug that that's automatically defaulted. It's mm. like. Right. Yeah, you know, don't automatically default that. Well, but we've said this before. Does. Number one is I don't remember anywhere eBay announcing this, and that's I think eBay does not a good job with that. About there's no like yeah place where you can see where changes are happening as they happen. And number two is just like yeah, they just should not change its processes by default. You know, they right, can default. add functionality that right. people can opt into. But, you know, you have people like us, and I think there's a significant community on eBay that this is our job. Right. It's our business. Right. And we build a process. Yeah. And if every time they mess that up, it becomes a thing. Yeah. And I just feel like there's no need for it. I mean, uh, the fact that best offer is automatically checked is so weird to me. I'm like... If you had a preference, if you were like, you know, within your account, you're like, always put best offer on my listings, like to be able to make that like a pref. Right. But to just have it on and people are like, no, I don't want this. I will say, just on the other hand, Mm -hmm. I feel like eBay 
is improving. Yes, I agree. I feel like the website, at least, because we do most of the stuff on the computer, yeah. it's cleaner. I feel like they're starting to now, like they're slowly getting away from the old eBay pages yep. and updating everything. I also and, like uh, that um, nice. I do like Make Offer. We have Make Offer on a majority of our store. Like, almost everything has Make Offer. Um, I like that you can send offers through messages. If someone's just asking a question, I love that. Um, I think they've made it... They've made it more a part of eBay, which I think is different than Amazon. Or I don't know if you can do Make Offer on Etsy. Um, I'm sure, like, ten people are going to tell me if I can. But, um... I like that as a shopper, you know, someone has something up for a high price and I'm like, I don't know, would they take, you know, a little bit off? I don't know. Let's try it. And people seem to be willing, you know. We all love a deal, don't we? Hi, this is Bookarama down in uh, Sarasota. I've been using the eBay app, noticing all the changes they've made in it. And uh, this is just a request to eBay. Would you guys please make it so I can adjust my notifications? I don't want to get your sales hints as notifications. I just want to know when I sold something or when something needs relisting. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> so I have no idea if anyone from eBay listens to this podcast. Yeah, so I, I don't, don't know. know who's gonna get I know what you. he's talking about. I, I don't, I mean, we don't get email, but in our eBay uh, messages, we'll get those uh, messages are, are like, these are the hot items that uh, oh, you can yeah, sell. And they're trying to, I guess they're trying to encourage you to buy like wholesale items. Or, or they're like, this is how you can change your listings to sell better. I'm like, I or these, whatever. you know, these things are being all watched. Uh, change your prices, right. and you'll ten percent chance you'll sell them. What I would love on the app is if the we've talked about this a million times. If the sound of a message is different than the sound of an offer, yeah. that's different than the sound. Of, well, something selling is a cha-ching. So you're like, Airbnb is like that too. A booking that's come through, I want different, sound different than someone just asking me a question. Yep. You know, you're like, because you hear the sound and you're like, did I get a booking or is someone having a problem? You know, yep. you don't know until you look at your yep. phone. Yeah. No, right. Yeah, it's the same thing on eBay. Yeah, same thing. Like, I want an offer to be a different twinkle sound than, <laughs> you know, someone just asking a question. Hi, um, I'm calling in regards to the Etsy packing questions that you guys had. It was actually funny because I've never really thought about it. I do eBay on the side, and then I work for my sister-in-law who years ago created a skincare business on Etsy, and now we're in Whole Foods, so I get kind of both shipping worlds. And for instance, today at work, I packed about 70 orders for the Etsy orders. For every single order, I bubble wrap a body butter or I bubble wrap, you know, whatever it is. I'll bubble wrap it and then I wrap it in a nice brown paper like a Chipotle burrito. <laughs> then I stamp it with our logo. And then um, we have blank boxes and we put crinkle paper around to protect them so they're super protected. Um, and then we have a card that we've printed off that we got designed nicely and we stick it in the top. So I think that with Etsy, because it's more of an artisan sort of platform that people like experience overall versus ebay i i don't know that's my two cents on it it's funny because when i do ebay packages at my house i don't care at all and i do care a little bit but not too much so i'll wrap something but i never think oh i need to make this look really pretty it's more i need to make sure that this thing doesn't break getting to the person so um it is kind of interesting i'm not really sure why um it's like that but hey whatever floats your boat i guess (laughs) and it is nice to receive packages oh and also the uh reviews on people some people actually will say to us really like the packaging or way when we first started they would say like you know they'd comment on on it like they didn't like that there was plastic surrounding something or whatever if they were eco-friendly so i don't know it's interesting but um thanks for the podcast i really love you guys so this was about a week ago we had someone comment that they sell on etsy and they were saying that they feel like etsy really pushes them to Package things very like nicely. almost like you it gift wrapped everything. It's almost like gift wrap. And I actually looked on Etsy, and actually Etsy doesn't tell you that, but all their photos 
definitely they are indicate that. encouraging that idea. And then a lot of people on the forum said that we were ignorant, which is true. I don't know a lot about Etsy. They're like, it, you don't need to do. I that. pack like normal, like right. I do on eBay. It's, it's not a big thing. I will say. So what I think it is is Etsy really pushes you to have a brand. Yes. I find like a lot of people are like right. in the organic body butter company right, right. and so you're buying from me the company and yep. so you and on ebay it's like people aren't buying from the store people are just buying they don't care what your username is they don't care what your store looks right. like like people <laughs> people have always written to us more so when we started what should i call my store if i just sell books should i have a bookstore and then if i just sell shoes i'll have a shoe nobody cares yeah on ebay Nobody cares. Right. Nobody cares what you're called. No, what they care about is getting a good price and getting their item not broken. Yep. But on Etsy, and as I'm listening to this, you know, she's saying they have this skincare line. It's now at Whole Foods. Like, they've wow. definitely branded themselves. Wow. Like, that's a success story, right? The packaging on Etsy goes along with what you said, the brand, the experience. Right. Like, and because that is, if you want people to come back and buy yeah, more. Yeah, you, you know? you want, because you're making things. You're making honey. You're making lip balm. You're making crafts. You're making earrings. You know, you want repeat customers. You want those customers to come back and buy presents for people for every birthday and every Christmas and blah, blah, blah. Now, now people did say that even on eBay, they actually do have a process of packing uh, nicely where they yes. just buy a lot of cheap tissue paper. Right, nice tissue everything paper. Everything nice and they like buy a little cards and they don't even say they write anything. They just like sign their name or something. Right, and that's so it feels cool. personal, you know. You know, and that's good. And look, if you feel like doing that, you should definitely do that if that makes you feel like your customers are having a better experience that's fine but i think it does have to do a lot with what you're selling you know if you are selling body butters and lotions and things you handmade on ebay you might want to ship that way too yeah you know totally i just feel we have never seen repeat customers on a consi- on a consistent basis. I mean on every eBay, no every way. so often on eBay we'll get someone that buys again, but it's very so very rare. rare. Maybe it's just be and I'm and I'm just thinking it's just it's because of the kind of store we have, you know? It's just yeah. like people are just finding something, our thing pops up in search it and just happens to be they're buying us. that item. We don't really have the kind of store where people are like, uh, you know, I need to buy toner paper or whatever right right yeah it's and just, you're my toner paper guy yeah exactly and, yeah. so i just think it's a different experience now if you if you were just selling uh vintage stuff on etsy maybe you would still feel like you needed to wrap stuff nicely um you know i i don't ship things like the guy who shipped me that that voice over IP box and the phone, like I mentioned last week, he literally just threw it in a box, didn't wrap it. So it didn't rattle around. I mean, the thing was shaking around in the box. I'm surprised it didn't get broken. You don't want to be that extreme, even on eBay. You know, you don't, you don't want to just like not have any padding or packaging. Like I, I protect things, you know, but I don't, I do wrap things in tissue paper when it's needed, I mean, you know. It's just like, I think eBay in that sense is more like Amazon. Yeah. Am- Amazon is, it's a clean box. It's in stuff there. Stuff is in there. It's protected. There's no, it's not gift wrap. Sometimes it's, it's so protected, you're like, yeah. what? This is insane. But whatever, um, it's fine. Yeah. Like a burrito. I love that. Like a burrito. <laughs> Yummy. Okay, that is it for the podcast this week. You can check out the blog at scavengerlife.com for the links we discussed and to join the conversation on the forum. When you sign up for the forum, please email me and tell me you're a real person. (laughs) That's been working. I've been getting a ton of emails. I get so many emails, sometimes I can't even keep up with it, so that's good. You can leave a question or a comment on our voicemail line. Again, the phone number is 540-407-8486, or you can email us a question, an audio file from your phone. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. We post an episode every Monday morning. On Wednesday, we post a What Sells video being brought to you by Stephen Schultz. You can subscribe to our Patreon account, which helps us pay our server fees for as little as a dollar a month. That's $12 a year. 
just to remind you. You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube for free, of course, and you'll always get the latest episodes. You can buy five years worth of archive podcasts from us. That link is on the sidebar. We're ending this podcast in, in three, three, two, two one. one. Bye.